Top 10 Facts About Roland Barthes' Theories Roland Gerard Barthes was a French philosopher and literary theorist who had a great influence in the development of structuralism, semiotics, anthropology, and post-structuralism. Born in Cherbourg, France in 1915, Barthes' extensive writings left a mark on literary and social theories and his essays helped establish structuralism as a leading intellectual movement in Western 20th century philosophy. He passed away in 1980 at the age of 64 from chest injuries he sustained in a road accident in Paris. Hi, this is Michnia. Welcome to Upline. In this video, we will look at the top 10 facts about Roland Barthes' literary theories. 1. Theorist of Intertextuality the most eloquent theorist of intertextuality, who always attacked the notions of stable meaning and unquestionable truth, was Roland Barthes. He is associated with structuralism, post-structuralism and semiotics. In his essay The Theory of Text, published in 1981, Barthes defines what he meant by the term text and intertextuality and built his theory on both Julia Kristeva's and Mikhail Bakhtin's work. 2. The act of writing. A textual scholar is considered to be someone concerned with manuscript studies, with the task of determining the validity of a text. Barthes argued that not the text is the material inscription of a work, but the work is the material offering the possibility of meaning, closure and thus of interpretation. The term text is considered to be the act of writing. Barthes makes it clear that we should not confuse the text and the work. The work is held in the hand, the text in language. 3. Textual Analysis Barthes' most important discussions of textual analysis were written in the late 1960s and early 1970s, during a period in which post-structuralism was emerging from within structuralism. Thus, textual analysis is not considered as a critique of structuralism, but as a part of a new movement. Some of the most relevant examples of textual analysis produced by Barthes are based on readings of literary works. In his textual analysis, Barthes tried to say no longer from where the text comes, historical criticism, nor even how it is made, structural analysis, but how it is unmade how it explodes, disseminates, by what coded paths it goes off. 4. The Theory of Text Barthes' theory of text involves the theory of intertextuality because the text offers a plurality of meanings and it is also woven out of numerous already existing texts. The text is not a unified isolated object that gives a singular meaning, but an element open to various interpretations. Similar to Julia Kristeva, Barthes considered that only literature written after the emergence of modernism allows the reader to become fully active in the production of meaning. Only modernist literature and the literature that follows it gives example of texts, which can be reinterpreted rather than just simply read by the reader. 5. Types of Readers Barthes emphasizes the role of the reader in the production of meaning, and he distinguished two types of readers. On the one hand, consumers who read the work for stable meaning, and on the other hand, readers who are productive in their reading, which he called writers of the text. The readers that engage themselves in the second kind of reading are, in Barthes' words, doing textual analysis, in contrast with the more traditional criticism. This practice of reading, seen as rewriting, is at the basis of Barthes' theory of intertextuality. 6. Death of the author One of the most widely known features of intertextuality is Barthes' claim of the death of the author. Barthes combines psychoanalytical and linguistic theories to argue that the origin of the text is not a unified authorial consciousness, but a plurality of other words, other utterances, and other texts. 7. Intertextual language. Barth suggests that the meaning of the author's words does not originate from the author's own unique consciousness, but from the place of those words within linguistic and cultural systems. The author has the role of a compiler, 
or arranger of pre-existing possibilities within the language system. Each word, sentence, paragraph or whole text that the author produces takes its origins from the language system out of which it has been produced. Thus, the meanings are expressed in terms of the same system. The view of language expressed by Barthes in this way is what theorists have termed intertextual. 8. Meaning from language Intertextuality for Barthes means that nothing exists outside the text. Barthes' intertextual theory destroys the idea that meaning comes from and is the property of the individual author. In his book Intertextuality, published in 2000, Graham Allen synthesizes this view by saying that the modern scripter, when she, he, writes, is already in a process of reading and rewriting. Meaning comes not from the author, but from language viewed intertextually. 9. Authors become readers. The intertextual nature of writing turns both the traditional author and the traditional critic into readers. Barr concludes The Death of the Author, published in 1977, with the following lines. A text is made from multiple writings, drawn from many cultures and entering into mutual relations of dialogue, parody, contestation, but there is one place where this multiplicity is focused, and that place is the reader, not, as hitherto said, the author. The reader is the space on which all the quotations that make up the writing are described without any of them being lost. A text's unity lies not in its origin, but in its destination. The birth of the reader must be at the cost of the death of the author. 10. Intertextual conceptualization Although Saussure, Batkins, Kristeva's and Barthes' works are sources of intertextual conceptualization, they fail to develop a rigorous theory of how to use intertextuality when analyzing texts. Barthes' post-structuralist texts are examples of a radical form of intertextuality rather than intertextual theory as it exists in critical practice. This is one reason why critics had to move away from post-structuralist theories and discover ways in which intertextuality could be applied to the analysis of other texts. To make sure you don't miss the next episode, subscribe to UpLife, a space where we strive for an upgraded lifestyle. Ciao, this is Michnia, signing off from Beijing.